honestly, and going first. Uh, still, we have to see if she will have the chance to go first. And she does. She does. With the quick fix, getting the big red. Let's see if she's starting things off. Okay, where are though also getting the Magician Soul? I think mm -hmm. she actually having a very good hand. And as we can see, she's playing incredibly fast. Both of these duelists one and one. That means that their fate is entirely in their hands. Whoever wins this advances. So the pressure is on. And it's going to be hype. Um, if Farfa doesn't have any sort of interruption, I think we will be seeing uh, Spiral at full modality, I have to say, yeah. and I can't really wait to seeing my favorite deck this in action. <laughs> could quickly get out of hand very, very, very fast. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned this before. Uh, I think Spider, if it goes first, honestly, and you don't have any sort of interruptions, I mean, we will see, I think, incredible stuff from Colossa. Here comes a Link Summon. Yeah, this is a good extender basically because you got to search uh, the cast for sleeper and the blocker also will resolve during the end phase. Uh -huh. I think this is very nice because now you get to search for the master plan. You get the sleeper which is uh, I think super powerful to play with and another spider resort. Mm -hmm. And what I really like about the resort is that your opponent cannot target your spider cast uh, with card effects in general. So cards such as Infinite Impermanence, Effect Veiler, don't work. Yeah. I'm and here we see the drone, which I think is uh, the most powerful card in the deck. Oh, okay. Tell me a little bit about that. Why is that the most uh, powerful card that you've highlighted, given I how powerful everything else seems yeah. to be? I really like it because basically once the drone is summoned, you get the chance to see the first three top cards of your opponent deck mm -hmm. and put them in the order you prefer. Oh, okay. And now, I think that uh, Colossa will be link summoning another card, which is Celine. Okay. And then, of course, you can Celine and then potentially get back yeah. an Effect Vela and then Link 4, probably into Appaloosa or, okay, not Effect Vela, but still probably gonna yeah. she go into Appaloosa. Yeah, exactly. She has a lot of things going on at the moment. She brings back the master plan, bringing back the rescue. And now oh. we will be having the link summon of the one and only double helix. Wow. Why orange, Why the uh, spiral guild drone is so powerful? Because now Colossa knows that the monster is on top and then she will get to resolve the double helix master plan. Another one and another rescue most likely exactly will be added and now we will get the chance to see how powerful this deck is so do you just sit on the Celine? do you go into the Appaloosa or something else i think she will go even something even mad i would say because basically she will go for the Appaloosa, as you mentioned uh -huh. but if she really wants to is her extra deck she has cards such as the nightmare griffon which is very powerful mm -hmm. because she has a very powerful combo Nightman Griffon with the Pointer of the Red Lotus. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I really like about this combo is basically that uh, with the drone, you basically get to choose what your opponent next card will be. And with the Red Lotus, your opponent will be forced to show you his hand. And uh, what I really like also is that she has multiple ah. rescue. Ghost Trick Dullahan. Yeah, and now she Into goes for the... Angel of Mischief, something that you don't really see quite often. And actually, speaking of the Ghost Trick archetype, just want to highlight that the Delightful Dwellers of Darkness solo mode has recently come into Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Uh, there is a new dual field, Ghost Trick Mansion, new card sleeves, themed after the Ghost Trick Festival, and a new limited time only Ghost Trick Lantern Mate. And uh, that being said, I think Colossa is just showing us how powerful this deck is. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, here she goes with the Curious, and uh, I mean, I just want to s be sit here and uh, seeing how powerful this deck is. Uh, and this is the combo I talked to you about. She sends this Red Lotus to the graveyard, yep. and uh, she will soon be summoning the Nightmare Griffon, and then she will get back the Appointer of the Red Lotus. Okay. Uh, now the fix, the quick fix being activated from the graveyard, she 
gets the rescue to the graveyard. Bring back the quick fix. This deck is incredible. Honestly, I mean, I actually miss playing this deck. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, can take it into the uh, into the rank duel ladder. Oh, sure, I yeah. will. Okay. After this tournament, I will. And Good. I really hope Colossa will advance uh, as much as she can. I mean, I'm rooting for Farf as well, but she is on Spiral. I have to give credit to her for this powerful and incredible deck. And uh, as we mentioned, Farfa doesn't have, unfortunately, any interruption. He is just watching it happen. Yeah, he's watching uh, Colossus doing uh, her stuff. Hopefully he doesn't have to watch all of these monsters yeah. crash into his life points one turn from now. <laughs> and uh, she is basically showcasing us how powerful this deck is. I mean, look at this field and she it's not done still yet. still going, yeah. Yeah, she's not done then. Do we see the Nightmare Griffin? The right one. Yeah. Here it comes. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now she will set back the appointer of the Red Lotus. This is the combo I talked to you about. Talk very to powerful. Me about it. Again, please, just why Why is this so potent and powerful? This is, I think this is brutal because basically with the appointer of Red Lotus, you, your opponent is uh, revealing your hand yep. and basically you get the, you basically choose uh, w w whatever card is the best in their hand and you get to banish them basically. Okay. And uh, also, it, she's not done yet because now she will be able also to special summon the uh, spir uh, Spiral Sleeper yep. and by banishing three Spiral cards from the graveyard and also if she has as well the Spiral Guild Last Resort and mm -hmm. she has she will be able to equip it to the Sleeper and one cool interaction is that the Sleeper has a very powerful effect you can activate it on your own rescue but given that it cannot be destroyed basically it's like a loop you can be doing this every single turn and here basically farfa knows what he will be drawing but with the pointer of the red lotus being set now colossa has a huge advantage especially because during the end phase the spiral result will resolve mm -hmm. getting back a card from the graveyard to colossus deck and look at this field <laughs> <laughs> negation with Apple Loser. Oh, I wonder what um, Father drew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here comes the appointer of the Red Lotus. What a combo from Colossa. And here we get to see Farfa's end. She gets rid of the AL end. Uh. Look at this. That feels <laughs> bad. <laughs> I think it's uh, <laughs> Farfa needs a miracle, honestly. And uh, I am really happy that we got the chance to seeing this deck in action uh, for the first time this weekend because Colossa showcased us how to play the deck mm -hmm. and also with the ghost tricks that you previously mentioned I think she was able to put up an incredible combo with the Nightman Griffon on the field alongside with the Apollos and on the Sleeper. Farfa of course now will search for the island that Colossa just got rid of. Still, I mean with the Sleeper on the field honestly for Farfa. Uh, of course now he can special summon the monster on the field just trying to put some pressure now Colossa Chains the sleeper. Okay. I think uh, she would have waited, honestly, uh, because of course now sh uh, Farfa is not going to resolve. The thing is that Colossa also has the Ash Blossom on her hand. Yeah. Farfa goes for the ALN. Um, Battle of the Field spells. Battle of the Field Spell, and once again, I think it's worth mentioning how our players this weekend are relying on Field Spells, mm -hmm. and which I think it's one of the key elements this weekend. You know, Spiral Resort and Island being activating. Let's see what Farfa tries to do. It's not easy at all to deal with this impressive field from Colossa.
Fafa is thinking. Yeah, the thing is that it's not easy actually to deal with the Colossus field, especially because Farfa knows that there's an Ash Blossom that will be activating on the side of money for sure. Yeah. Here it is. Here comes the Ash Blossom, very well played by Colossa. And Farfa is left just with one car in his hand. Very difficult situation to be in. He goes for a Link Summon. Dark Infant. He gets to activate the island. Okay. He's just trying, you know, to take some kind of advantage. Colossa is considering it. I think uh, knowing what uh, Farfa was holding, I would have played maybe more conservatively if yeah. I were Colossa. Uh, I mean, of course, there's the Apollosa and there are a lot of cards going on for her. But still, maybe I would have waited for the Sleeper. Still, I think, impressive stuff from her. Now, she also activates the Rescue. Okay. I think uh, uh, Colossa, she's shaking a bit her hand because, I mean, there were a lot of things going on. She might have played, as I told you, more conservatively, waiting for the sleeper. Where does this go? Yeah, he's ju he just entered battle phase and attack over the other loser. Okay. And then Splash Mage in Moon Phase 2? Yeah. That's what? Yeah, uh, here the thing is that Farfa is trying to survive as much as he can, and I think he's also playing well given that Colossa starting things off with this impressive combo. Mm. It's not easy to play against this, as we mentioned. Maybe if she had waited for that sleeper, mm, that we might have been saying something different, but still, um, Farfa is considering if there's something else he can do, but there's not still Farfa has seen enough very well played by Colossa we mentioned how powerful the spiral deck is especially going first that was probably the most formidable turn one we'd seen this tournament so far from any competitor yeah, I mean if I were you guys and if you will be saying Colossa being your opponent uh, I will be super scary honestly I think we have to get give credit to Farfa for trying still uh, because there were a lot of things going on not only there was the Apple Loser with the Gryphon and the Red Lotus yeah. but there was also the Sleeper uh, I think Farfa played very well also because Colossa had the Ash Blossom so she had a lot of resources honestly mm -hmm. and Farfa just tried you know his cards um, here let's just jump real quick to see Julio and TGZ anime See, Access Code Talker I was anticipating, but Splash Mage? Talk to me a little bit about why we're seeing that card in particular. Because basically what you're really looking for some most of the times is that uh, you want basically to push enough damage and put pressure on your opponent. But here we saw Colossa starting things off with the Spoiler Resort and after Searching his car, Farfa had the drone and Lockbird, disrupting Colossa's strategy completely. Yep. And uh, Farfa is the only one player having drone and Lock in his main deck. And uh, it is paying off, because basically drone and Lockbird is one of the most powerful cards to play it, against Especially Spiral. in the format with Max C. Exactly. But having a against spirals that searches for a lot of cards with the quick fix the spider resort for example the, the master plan having it it's the best way of interruption uh in this situation uh this was incredible honestly and indeed as we saw colossa was forced to set a monster and to set trap cards now once again the splash mage makes his appearance 
I think it has been summoned. I lost count, honestly, of how many times. Update Jammer. Update Jammer as well. Okay. So, do you sling them off immediately and into an uh, access code? Yeah, I think, yeah. Farfa is going for game. He's just okay. trying. He's just trying if he's going for game. Let's see if he will find out his way or if Colossa is holding any sort of interruption. I am very intrigued to see if this access code talker can yeah. indeed push for game. But she has the forbidden droplet. Okay. So very good for her. She will be able to survive at least this turn because otherwise she would have lost straight away. Because now what I'm thinking is that Farfa, of course, really wanted to push enough damage, but uh, it can still activate the field spell. I really hope he's holding on into something else into his end. Mm -hmm. uh, because extending for the access code token, as we saw today, if you don't really get the chance to, s to sealing the match, the, the game, uh, during that specific turn, otherwise you might be losing resources. It's still um, holding, I think, a couple of few resources, and hopefully for him, he might be having, I don't know, effect failure of Ash Blossom. We will soon see. Still looking good for him after that draw the lock being activated and there's also the sign of mine. Really intriguing to see how this one will play out. Of course, the access code took her a little bit less threatening than you maybe hope for. Um, but Farfa's turn still far from over. Yeah, as you mentioned, this is more than far from over, I have to say. Um, last set card from Colossa might be a spiral mission rescue uh, because otherwise she would have activated the ponder of the red lotus straight away i think this is good for farfa because uh, here he might be able to continue and extend his combo he still needs to enter battle phase and uh, push some damage to colossa he's thinking about it Colossus field now just that single set spell trap card uh, and as such probably not much of an answer going to come through if we do see this access code talker swing for 2150. Yeah, that's right. We can tell that Farfa is thinking about it. Okay. He's now going to special summon another adding Nista monster to his side of the field. He's now going for another link summon. He gets rid of the access code talker and he goes for the trans code talker. Okay. So basically he gets back the spell from the graveyard, uh -huh. which I like, honestly. He goes for the trans, talk, trans code talker effect, brings back the update jammer. Okay. Does he play another access code talker? And he yes, does. Yes, he does. He does. Wow. Okay. Oh, but what is this face down spell trap? <laughs> I think Colossa might be having a spell and mission rescue, and indeed it was. She is using the effect. Is that going to save the game? Looks like uh, this will be enough. Uh, and Farfa incredibly takes on game two. It <laughs> we can see our players smiling. Looks like Farfa finds his way back into this game two after Colossus had the Forbidden Droplet. And with that going to a game three, it means that both of these players still have their tournament dreams alive they yep. still have a chance to get to that day two talk to me a little bit about the the way they must be feeling with uh, with the stakes this high and also just tell me a little bit about what we're expecting to see from each of them in game three in terms of win conditions now the backs are against the wall 
Well, I have to say that both of these players are very experienced. They know how to play on stage. They know how to be calm. Uh, very experienced players on... But I think here maybe it might be relevant if Farf draws once again Jordan Lockbird, which is against Pyro. Very powerful. Can't wait to see our game three. Our players are ready. Let's jump into it. Yep, let's jump into it. Indeed, as Colossa, Colossa is the one starting... <laughs> Once Out. again, Colossa starting things off. Wow. Spyler Resort getting the quick fix. Magician Soul sending the master plan. Wow. This is going to be as game one if Farfa doesn't have any sort of interruption. I got to say, the uh, the lack of hesitation is really cool to watch. <laughs> Just yeah. play, 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 yeah. play, 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 play. Let me play my car. <laughs> she mm. really knows his deck at heart i have to say um and i think once again with the spider resort being on the field the spiral monsters cannot be targeted which mm -hmm. means that farfa cannot use effect veiler with infinite permanence and uh here <sighs> now farfa is considering if doing anything i mean that's the thing is farfa is probably doing what any of us would have done in this situation where you know the the tournament you're advancing from this group is on the line take as much time as you can to just kind of think every single possible situation through here yeah and Colossa, uh, no, <laughs> no no such reservations no hesitation yeah. just going for the win yeah anything here farfa activates the effect veiler on the only spot he could have activated it which mm -hmm. is the Magician Souls. Now, Absar Gori being activated from Colossa, getting a fresh card. So now she's considering her options because... Um, what are those options? Give me, give me a couple. What would be the optimal play here from your perspective? So what we saw in game one is that she was able to go for a very cool play that I actually like, uh, which might we might not be saying. Indeed, she goes straight ahead with the double helix, gets to search mm -hmm. with the master plan, and now she most likely be able to activate. Here comes the spiral gill drone, the assault being activated from the graveyard, and then the drone once again will look up at Farfa's top three cards and with that being said Colossa will be able to seal double elix effect she has put on top the Gachiri and then she will be able to special summon another master plan from the deck very powerful card and here she gets to search another rescue and uh, although Farfa had the effect veil on the Magician, so we have to say that that will not be enough for sure because we will be seeing us game one Colossa being able to <laughs> basically extend her combo as much as he can and she will most likely go for the Gryphon play alongside with the Apollosa and the Sleeper. Yeah, really, really, really formidable board, uh, formidable field starting to uh, shape up here. The Ghost Trick Dalahan coming out. You have to imagine this goes again into the next stage, the uh, Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. Where does this lead? Is it another Game 1 situation? 100%. 100% I can tell you that she really wants to go for the combo as she did in Game 1. And uh, what I really like about this combo once again is not only that you give your opponent basically a top deck card that you already know, but with the pointer of the Red Lotus, basically, you disrupt uh, his strategy. And here, with Master Plant being special summoned multiple times, you got also the rescues that are very powerful in the graveyard. You get to banish them to special summon one Spiral Monster from the graveyard. And also, with the Ghost Tricks on the line, here you got more and more cards play yeah. after play. This is really shaping up to be a scary field from the side of Colossa. The Selim, Queen of the Master Magicians and Magician Souls coming together to make that Appaloosa that we were mentioning time and time again. Farfa probably not going to have the answer here. 
four cards in hand. Far, far fortunately, he doesn't have much going on. He had the effect really at the beginning of Magician Souls, and uh, here Colossa extending her plays. Uh, she brings back the double helix with the rescue effects from the graveyard. Let's see what she decides to do. Mm -hmm. She goes for another link summon. She might be going for. Ah, she changes the combo. Try and okay. Gate for the first time this tournament. Okay, she changes the combo. Uh, Talk to me about that. Okay, so basically, if Tri Brigade is pointing through three link monsters, basically it is a uh, it can negate a monster effect spell or chop card, okay. and uh, it is very powerful. Uh, she decided to change the lineup, which is uh, kind okay. Mm -hmm. uh, here comes the quick fix once again. Colossa gets his effect resolve, getting the big red. I'm really curious to seeing where this will end because the, um, with this field still, she is not done yet. Uh, I think she will summon the dragon. Uh, rather large link summon, yeah. Going yeah. straight into the link four Nightmare Griffin, as you mentioned. So, with the Griffin being link summoned, now she. Gets back the ghost trick shot. Okay, she activates the rescue, brings back most likely the double helix, and in this case, the tri gate wizard is alive. Interesting. Very interesting play from Colossa. And now also the sleeper along with the field spell and the very very good level last and resort if you're father here how do you deal with this it looks fairly insurmountable to me it because very scary. such a scary field it is super scary honestly we have said this before if colossa gets to go first this is what she can do and uh, she knows her deck so incredibly does she have the appointer and she does she are drew the appointer of red lotus reason why she went for this combo that i really like honestly look at this end colossa most likely she could get rid of maybe the side money yeah more than um, likely because he has three normal summons and then the gachiri which is an extender if she gets rid of the sign and mining means that uh, the first normal summon she will go for the sleeper um let's see what she decides to get rid of oh okay, okay. with the gachiri interesting uh it doesn't really change much because she can still negate the sign and mining with the triget wizard mm -hmm. so now farfa will add the full spell from this deck to the hand yep but also the Forbidden Droplet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> what yeah, a hand. Really difficult Fuffer to, to deal with this. What a hand from Colossa that showed us how powerful this deck is. Now Farfa will uh, most likely go for the Sign and Mining, which will be negated by the Trigate Wizard. Farfa is thinking about that, but not, there's not much that he might do. He could go for a Link Summon, but then, um, yeah, he goes for the Sign at Mining. I think Colossa here has to negate with the Dragon Wizard. Let's see what she decides to do. She does. I like this play. Okay. And Farfa is left just with, with one card. Yeah, single card in hand. Uh, probably not the card he was hoping for probably not the card he was hoping for as you mentioned uh, here very difficult far far left with just one card let's see and Colossa is the winner of this match 
very well played. Wow, I have to say, very well played by both of our players. Game one, Colossa showcased us how powerful this deck is. Game two, Farfa came back to the game incredibly with the second access code token. Yeah, which we were not expecting at all. And in game three, I think Colossa very, very well played, well deserved. Two wins, one loss, which means that uh, she is now going for very good record. I believe there should be an interview coming with Ed. And uh, she is. As a result of winning is Colossa! Give it up for Colossa, everybody! Right, Colossa, come with me. We're going to go over to the interview area and we'll have a quick chat about the game that's just happened. Always very exciting, all this. It just seems to kick off. And what made that incredibly tense was the fact that whichever one of you won is going to grab yourself a microphone and we'll have a quick talk about it. So how do you feel? Great. Yeah? It's, it's great, but I think that my deck is just too broken when you're going first. I did, if you don't have, like, Droll, like in the second game, I guess that's really easy to win if you know which move to do. Sure. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the other games that you've had today, because we haven't managed to see much other than the odd glimpse here and there on the stream, so well, we're keen to know how you've performed. I think that the best game was the first, the very first, with my teammate, Turner, because I really, really struggled to, in order to make the win happen, because really, really, on the, the second game, it was really, really tough. I got Nibirud, <laughs> and then I remained only with Slipper, like a Slipper controller, right? And uh, I don't know how I managed to win. So that was really, really a nice game. I really, really enjoyed it playing it. Thank you, Turna. Well, it was genuinely great to see this because last night you were showing us what a perfect field for you looks like. And in two of those games, it looked like you had an almost perfect field in this last duel. And as a result, you've won. And now you've qualified for tomorrow. You're now in the top cut. So that must feel pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's really exciting because, well, I think this is kind of big event, yeah, this is the very first event for Master Duel, so I'm really, really excited because, well, I'm the first in this event, in this kind of event, yeah. That's very exciting, that is exactly right, and so we're very, very interested to see what happens tomorrow in that top cut. Remember, it's we <laughs> don't know who is going to be facing who until we get there tomorrow, so congratulations on getting in to the top cut and into tomorrow stuff. Tomorrow. It's going to be very exciting to see what happens. But we have one more duel ready for you guys to see. So we've got Zulu versus Rev's cards. We're going to see what happens with that duel. And then we're going to be done for the day. Like I said, remember, tomorrow the first thing we're going to be doing is drawing in to who is playing off against who. An exciting way to start off tomorrow's coverage. So make sure that you guys tune in tomorrow.